All right, guys, we're going to start standing at the top of our mat. We're going to start with our feet, our legs, about hip distance, sit bones distance apart, so we can do our standing roll down. Arms are going to reach up nice and long overhead, stretching towards the ceiling, and then we're going to curl. We're going to fold and curl, rolling down towards the floor, piece by piece, vertebra by vertebra, as if you're rolling off that imaginary wall behind you. And we're going to hang at the floor for a minute and just let everything stretch and decompress up the back of the legs and along the spine. Try not to let your shoulders fall towards your ears. Keep the neck long. And then we're going to bend the knees just a little bit and tuck the tailbone, pull the rib cage in, curl and restack the spine piece by piece. And arms are going to reach up nice and long overhead. Pull the rib cage in, tuck the tailbone, fold and curl at the mid ribs, curling and rolling down, piece by piece, letting yourself roll and fall for the floor. The head hangs, and we push back into the heels, rock forward onto the toes a little bit. We're going to move that stretch up and down the back of the leg. That nice little rock forward and back. Pushing the hips back past the heels for that deeper hamstring calf stretch. And we'll come to center. Slight little knee bend. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Curl and roll up. Rounding and rolling the spine. Curling and restocking the back. And arms reach up nice and long overhead. Fingers interlace. Arms and hands overhead, chest lifts up for the ceiling, tuck the tailbone slightly, keep that extension in the upper back, and then fold and curl forward, curling and rolling down towards the floor, piece by piece, letting yourself hang. And then we're going to walk it out. Hands are going to walk forward towards the end of your mat. Step by step. Come forward into that center plank. Ribs and abdominals knit in. And then hips go high. Into that downward dog position. Drive your heels towards the floor. Slide the shoulders down the back. And slowly walk the hands back towards the feet, trying not to sway the hips or the body from side to side. And head hangs. And we're slowly walking forward once again. Hands walk forward. Out along the mat, keep that tension, that bracing in the abdominals. Try not to sway as best you can. Drop into that center plank. And hips high towards the ceiling. Slide the shoulders down the back. Drive the heels for the floor. And this time we're going to walk our feet towards our hands. Nice and slow. One, two, three. Four, see if you can get one more, two more walk-ins. Nice flat feet, let the head hang. And we'll bend the knees a little. Hands go flat to the mat and we step back with that right leg. And back with the left. Returning to that center plank. Shoulders slide down the back, slight tuck of the tailbone, pull the ribs and the abdominals in. And knees drop for the mat. We sit back towards the heels and we stretch into that rest position. Into that child's pose. Reaching the hips back over the heels, stretching the arms nice and long overhead. 
and we go chin to chest, curl and roll forward. Bring the shoulders forward, back over the hands and the wrists, and we'll bring our knees up off the floor, off the mat to a nice straight leg. Slight lift in the chest so you're not too rounded through the upper back. Holding that strong center plank, and hips go high. In for that downward dog position. Drive your heels for the floor. Slide the shoulders down the back. Holding for five, four, three, two, one. We walk our hands back towards our feet, nice and slow with control. Letting the head hang. And bend the knees slightly. Tuck and curl. Slow to restack. Restacking the spine, vertebra by vertebra. Reaching up nice and long overhead. Fingers interlace. We hinge up and over to the right. And back to center. Stretch and lift up and over to the left. And back to center. One more each side. And arms rest. We're going to work some balance work with the foot and the ankle. So find either floor space on your mat, which can add more challenge for balance or come out onto a hard surface. You could also find a wall, find a door, something to anchor you to for this balance work. So I'm going to start with feet and legs, sit bones distance apart, standing nice and tall, and I'm going to rise up off of the heels. So on that exhale, I'm going to curl up off of the heels, lifting the heels, planting myself on the ball of the foot on the toes, trying to hold for three, two, one, and then very slowly lowering down. We're going to work these nice slow heel raises. Slow as we lift. Holding. And slow as you lower with control. We've got good tension in the legs, nice tuck of the tailbone. We're feeling that energy pull up our center line through the hips, up through the torso. As we rise to so both abdominals, back extensors are actively engaged as we lift the heels and we hold and slow to lower. You want to feel more activation in your leg, especially in the calf, the back of the lower leg versus the arch of the foot as we rise. Nice and smooth, nice and slow. Holding for that breath and then slow as you lower. Let's do one more. Tailbone tucks, find that zip, find that lengthening of the body, that stretch of the legs, that good tension as you push away from the floor. And slowly lower. Connecting our feet to the mat. We're going to go into some seated positions. Arms are going to come to the front without collapsing or rounding the shoulders or collapsing the chest. And we're going to sit down like we're sliding our back down the wall behind us. Knees go forward, we sit down. I'm keeping an upright vertical position of the back. So you feel that flexion at the ankle, that stretch at the lower leg, Achilles up there into soleus as you reach and sit, and then press away from the floor, stand up, stand tall. Exhale, bend at the knees, slide the hips, slide the shoulders down that imaginary wall behind you. Feel that flexion at the ankle. Check your alignment of your knees. Make sure they're not diving in. They're lined up over the center of the foot. Your feet are squared off. One or both feet are not too turned out. You're nice and squared. 
Feet are pointed to 12 o'clock, knees are out over the center of the foot. We press away and stand tall. Next exhale, bend and sit. Ribs are knitted in. We're not bowed forward. We're as upright as we can be. Push the knees apart and stand tall. We're going to now link the two together. So we're going to come down into our seated position. We're going to sit down. Slide down that wall. Slow as you come up to that standing position. And then rise up off of the heel. Straight legs as you curl up. Peel up off the floor, off the heels, and then lower the heels slowly to the mat, to the floor, and sit down. So we're going to link these two together. And pressing up. Straight legs rise off the heels, onto the ball of the foot. And heels lower, nice and slow and knees bend, we sit. So we're getting great movement at the ankle, good stability through the foot. As we link these two movements together, rest by your side. All right guys, we're going to come down to the mat laying flat on our back. And we're going to start with some of our pelvic tilts into our pelvic curls. Laying down nice and flat on the mat, you want to have that little tunnel at the small of the back. Bottom ribs can't be pointed up towards the ceiling. They need to be locked down and into the torso. Arms are reaching nice and long down by your side. Let's tilt the hips back. We're going to imprint the low back, flat against the mat. And then curl and articulate back towards the tailbone. And exhale, hips tilt. Finding that articulation, that C curve, and that hollowing as you tilt the hips back and imprint and flex the low back down against the mat. Reaching the arms nice and long. Nice movement of the hips as we tilt. Before we go into our pelvic curl, our full bridge, we're going to add a little bit of a chest lift. So we'll find some full flexion of the spine. Let's interlace our fingers, bring our hands behind the head, support the head, neck, and chest. And exhale, hips tilt back. We imprint the low back flat against the mat. And then fold and lift, head, neck, and chest. So we're creating the biggest C-curve we can through our spine. Upper body reset slowly to the mat, keeping the rib cage knitted and drawn together. And then we articulate, rock the hips back to neutral. Tailbone towards the floor. And exhale, hips tilt back. Imprint the low back, pull belly to back, and fold at the mid ribs to lift, head, neck, and chest. And slow to reset upper back, shoulders, head, go to the floor, and roll back towards the tailbone. Two more. First, we have that pelvic tilt, creating that C curve in our low back, and then we bring the chest lift in to create flexion in the mid back. And slow on the reset. Nice and smooth. Articulating back. And last one. Arms come down long by your side. We're going to work into that full pelvic curl. On the exhale, hips tilt back, 
We imprint the low back and begin to peel and lift up off of the mat. One segment, one vertebra at a time, curling and rolling up to the top of that bridge. We hold for a breath. As we knit the rib cage in, engage the glutes, pull through inner thigh, and then piece by piece, we curl and roll down along the spine, segment by segment. Each little piece of the back imprinting back to the mat, one bit at a time. Exhale, hips tilt back, and we roll and curl up off of the floor, pressing through the feet, squeezing through inner thigh, keeping that alignment of the knee over the center of the foot. And we've got good movement at the ankle. If we don't use the ankle joint, we have a hard time positioning the legs and the hips in the right spot at the top of the bridge. We need to be able to send the knees forward over towards the toes as we bridge and lift the hips. So we need that movement at the ankle to send the shin, the knees, the legs forward towards the feet so we don't end up over shrugged or up by our head and our neck with our upper body and we curl and roll down. One segment, one piece at a time. down out of that last pelvic curl, we're going to bring our knees to tabletop position. Hands rest to the side of the knees. You can do this with or without a chest lift. I'll add my chest lift in for single leg extension. Right leg goes out over the mat as the hands hold steady to that left knee and we switch. Hands transfer to that tabletop right leg as that left leg stretches out super long, nice and straight and we'll switch. Those first few are always nice and slow, nice and controlled. So you can find that full extension of the leg, that deep flexion at the bra line, at the mid ribs, as you reach and lengthen the leg out of the hip. Two more each side. And knees stay at tabletop, upper body resets back to the floor. We'll go arms up to a T position, palms up towards the ceiling. Separate the knees, we're going to go for a single leg lowers. We're keeping the knee bend at the knee, hinge at the hip, we inhale, foot taps the mat. And exhale, right leg lifts. We're going to stay on that right side as the right leg moves. With that knee bend, the knee is not helping the movement. Everything's coming from the hip as we work these single leg lowers. Either toes or heels are tapping for the mat. You can always add a flexed heel, flexed ankle, excuse me, to find the floor. One more right side. And then we hold, right leg to tabletop, take a breath, reset, and left leg hinges at the hip. Maintaining that knee bend, the angle of the knee as the leg moves smoothly in the hip. Nice smooth glide of the leg. Last one with that left side. And legs squeeze together at the center line. And on the inhale, both legs are going to lower for the mat. And exhale to lift. Ribs knit in. Belly pulls strong to the back. You're firing abdominals, back extensors as the legs hinge at the hip. You do not need to make contact with your mat or with your floor, especially if it's putting too much pressure on the low back or too much torque on the hip. We want to only move the legs as far as we can maintain that nice neutral pelvis, that strong, stable spine. Last three. And we'll hug 
the knees in towards the chest, round the back, find that stretch position. And legs return to tabletop, adding that chest lift once again. We're going to move into our double leg stretch. You could do this with or without your chest lift. Hands come to the knees and on the inhale, arms and legs move away from your center. Reaching out and arms circle around back to that tabletop leg. Inhale to open, keep that chest lift and slow on the exhale to circle. Modifying would be to go straight up towards the ceiling. Keep that leg and arm position closer and tighter to your center. The farther out the arms and the legs move from your center, the harder the movement is. Keep the chest up, keep it lifted as the arms travel overhead for these last two. And knees hug in towards the chest. We're going to tuck and curl, curl up, come up to that floating teaser prep position. You can modify with feet flat on the floor or hold that tabletop position. Roll the shoulders down and back. Hinge back a little bit to give yourself some space from your legs. And if you're ready, arms, hands come off the legs. We hold for five, four, three, two, one. Hands to the legs, curl and roll back, coming back to the mat and feet to the floor. Separate the feet mat, um, sorry, sit bones distance apart. We're going to lift the heels, go back into our shoulder bridges, our pelvic curls, decompress the front of the hips a bit, add some extension. So on the exhale, we're going to tilt the hips back, curl and articulate, peel and roll up off of the mat keeping the heels high and we curl and roll down. Slowly moving along the spine piece by piece, rolling all the way through back towards the tailbone, keeping the foot position the same as we move through that bridge. Nice and slow, smooth movement on and off of the mat. Arms are reaching long, shoulders are pulling down and back. One more. And slow to lower the feet. Bringing the legs to tabletop position. Arms come straight up towards the ceiling. Fingertips reaching with the arms. And on the exhale, arms lower. We lift the head, neck, and chest. And inhale to reset. Nice smooth fold at the mid ribs. We're working that hundreds prep. Arms and hands do not touch the mat. They stay elevated parallel to the floor. Takes the stress off of the neck. Keeps the shoulders in the correct position. So we don't collapse the chest or roll the shoulders in. Last two. And stay up, stay lifted on this last one. And legs extend straight up towards the ceiling, nice and long. And slow as the legs lower. And lift. 
Just a small movement. I don't need you to go all the way to the floor. Just that small little movement between 90 and 45. Last two. And knees bend to tabletop. We hug the knees in. Let's reach either for the back of the legs or for the feet. Pull the knees shoulder width apart and we stretch. Let the collarbone spread wide. The ribs and abdominals are going to knit in. And we're going to rock a little bit from hip to hip. And slow to unwind. Feet and legs are going to go nice and straight out on your mat. We're going to work our roll up. If you have a hard time rolling on and off of the floor, start in a seated position upright and you'll go the reverse versus coming all the way down to the floor. Arms are going to reach up nice and long overhead. And on the inhale, arms flow forward, chin to chest. We forward fold at the mid ribs and then curl and roll. Curling and rolling up off of the mat. And stretching out nice and long over the legs, over the feet. Again, if that initial roll up is hard, just come up to a seated position. Start in that seated position here. And then curl and roll back. Only as far as you can control the movement. And know that you can still successfully roll back up. Maybe you're only going halfway or a quarter way. And reaching out nice and long over the legs. Curling and rolling back all the way flat to the floor. Tailbone tilts back. We imprint along the spine, reaching the arms up long. Pull the rib cage, chest down and in. And arms flow forward. Bringing chin to chest, forward fold. And we curl. Stretch the legs. Feel that tension in the legs as they lengthen out of the hip towards the end of your mat. And curling back. Finding that reset. Piece by piece. One more roll up and then we'll move into that forward stretch. And we'll curl and restack. Sitting up nice and tall. Let's take our feet, our legs, mat width apart. And reset the position of your hips. Coming out of those roll-ups tends to pull the pelvis under. So I want you to kind of pull and stretch the legs back so you can feel the weight of your sit bones there on the floor. We're sitting up nice and tall. Arms come to the front. And we go once again, chin to chest, forward fold. We're reaching forward, stretching out over the legs. Take hold of the feet. Grab the legs, grab the feet, stretch forward. Now take your shoulders down, away from your neck, out of your ears. Pulling the rib cage in, drawing the belly in tight, pulling navel to spine. And next exhale, we slow to restack. Sitting up nice and tall, nice and long. Stretch the spine as tall and as long as you can. And on that inhale, we hinge at the hip. Leaning back, flat back, proud chest. Hold for three, two, one. Hinge up, sit tall, and chin the chest, forward fold. We stretch forward, reach out long over the legs. Feel that stretch travel up the back of the legs. And exhale, curling up. Slow to restack. Slide the shoulders down. Stretch everything along the back, the neck nice and long. And hinge at the hip, lean back, and hold, three, two, one. Sit up, sit tall, chin to chest, forward fold, curling and rolling forward out over the legs. 
Reach for the feet once again. Press the back of the legs down, flat against the mat. Get that extra stretch up the back of the leg. And exhale, restack the spine. Sitting up longer, stretching taller towards the ceiling as the legs reach long and away and we hinge, flat back, proud chest. And we hold that length for three, two, and one. Sitting up and sitting tall. Let's come on to our left side, side lying on our left. I'm going to start on the forearm. We were flat, laying flat last time. We're going to start with the forearm. And I have the bottom left leg bent for more stability. If you want to make it harder, go to a nice straight leg. Pulling the ribs in, pulling the belly in nice and tight. Top right leg is going to lift and lower. Stretching out nice and long as it lengthens and reaches up towards the ceiling. Ribs and abdominals knit in. Don't let the left side of the rib cage sag for the mat. We want to pull that up, draw that in as that right leg lifts. One more. And then we're going to stack the legs. I'm going to go right foot, right leg in front of the left. So we can come up into that side plank. Right arm reaches up for the ceiling and hips are going to lift. And we're going to hold that side plank. Glutes are engaged. You're squeezing through inner thigh. Modified position is bent knee and stack the legs. Three, two, one. We'll drop the hips. Coming down out of that position. And we're going to bend that left knee once again, that side lying position. Shoulders slide back and down. Top right leg hovers again. And we kick forward. And point the toe and we reach back. Reaching nice and long. You're not going to get a lot of extension as you go back. The hip won't allow it. More importantly though, is your torso nice and straight, nice and stable? You're not getting a lot of swaying in the body. You want to keep that length, keep that stability in the back and in the torso as the leg moves freely in the hip. One more. And we're going to come back to that side plank. Remember, you can modify to a bent knee. I'm going to go back to straight leg, stack right leg over left, right arm reaches up, and hips lift up and forward. Feeling the shoulder slide back and down, I want to make sure that left elbow is below my shoulder, and holding for five, four, three, two, one, slow to lower. Coming up to a kneeling position. Kneeling nice and tall. I'm going to take somewhat of a wide stance with the legs. So I'm going to come back over to that left side for a side stretch. So I'm going to bring my left hand down to the mat so my right knee will float and come up off the floor. I'm going to stretch that right leg out and lengthen it as if I'm trying to drag it up off the mat, out past the end of the mat. And then that right arm is going to come up and over, I'm going to push the rib cage up towards the ceiling. Feel that stretch along the rib cage. And lengthen up and over, pressing the hips forward, pressing the hips through. Make sure that bottom left arm is nice and straight. There's no bend in the elbow or shrug of the shoulder. You're really lengthening and straightening out. Three, two, and one. Coming out of it, we're going to go over to the other side. So we're going to come down back to those single leg lifts. 
Remember your modified position, more stability, that bottom right leg is bent, otherwise straight right leg, we're on our right forearm, and left leg is gonna hover, and that left leg lifts and lowers. Nice and smooth as that leg lengthens up and out of the hip. Reaching that left leg out nice and long. And we're going to transition now into that side plank. Remember, modified is stacked bent legs. I'm going to go left foot, left leg in front of the right with straight legs. Left arm comes up for the ceiling and then hips lift up and through. Holding strong here. Hips press forward, strong through inner thighs, through glutes. And we hold for five, four, three, two, one. Hips drop and we reset. I'm going to bring that bottom right leg forward into my bent position because we're going to go through flexion extension with this left leg. It gives me more stability, but again, you want more challenge, straighten that bottom right leg. Left leg comes forward, kicks forward, and reaches back. Keeping everything nice and stable, nice and stacked. Spine stays long. There's not a lot of movement in your back or in your waist as that leg moves freely in the hip. And three. Two. And one. And we're going back into that side plank. Stack the legs at a bent knee or cross. Straight left leg over the right. Find your alignment. Clean up that setup before your hips lift. And lift the hips up and forward, up off of that mat. Right shoulders pulling down away from the neck, away from the ears. Squeeze through glutes. Pull the rib cage in. Pull the belly in tight. We hold for five, four, Three, two, one, and hips lower. We're coming up to that kneeling position. So we can do that side over stretch. I start in a wide knee position, about shoulder width apart. Right hand is gonna come down to the mat. Left knee comes up. I don't need that left leg to make contact with the floor. I wanna make sure that my shoulder is stacked over my right hand, and my left leg is stretching down, out, away, out over the end of the mat, and left arm comes up and over, and the rib cage pushes up towards the ceiling, stretching up nice and long. Holding for five, four, three, two, one. Nice and slow. As you come out of it, we're going to go kneeling, feet back towards the end of your mat, knees apart, almost mat width, and we're going to sit back, drop the chest down between the knees, between the thighs, as the arms reach out long overhead, and we drop the chest down. Feel that stretch run along the underarm, opening and expanding the chest. Next exhale, we curl and restack. Sitting up nice and tall, nice and long. We're going to rise up off of the heels. Nice, tall, kneeling position. You can bring your feet together to press at your center to feel that connection at the back. Arms come forward. We're going to hinge at the knee and fall back. Stretch back. And rise. Nice and tall. 
slight tailbone tuck, you've got a lot of tension in the glutes, zipping up through the abdominals, draw the shoulders down and back, and we hinge at the knee. Working that thigh stretch. One more. And arms will rest. Let's square our legs off. We're going to bring our right foot forward into that kneeling lunge. If you need to be off your knee, that back left leg can be straight. And you can be in that balanced position here and not on that back left knee. We're going to stretch and open that left leg, left hip. The balance looks good. Fingers are going to interlace. Palms turn away. And then we reach up towards the ceiling and stretch. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands come down. If you're in that straight leg, drop the knee. We're going to switch sides. And we'll bring that left foot up and forward. Find that lunge stretch. Again, you can be off that right knee, straighten the leg. Requires a bit more balance if you're not going to use a wall. And we stretch and lengthen that right leg back. Shoulders down. Ribs in. Belly pulls in tight. Fingers interlace. Palms turn away and arms come up. And we stretch. Holding strong for five, four, three, two, one. Arms come down, drop that knee, bring that left leg back. We'll sit back once again into that child's pose. And we'll curl and come forward. Walk your hands forward towards the end of the mat. So shoulders are over hands and wrists. And we're going to step back with that right foot. And then with the left, returning to our center plank. Strong through the legs. Slight tuck of the tailbone. Little lift of the chest as you knit the ribs in. Pushing up nice and strong away from the floor. And then hips go high. Drive the heels down for the floor as you slide the shoulders down and back. And hands walk back towards the feet. Nice and slow. Try not to sway the body from side to side. Let the head hang. And next exhale, curling up, restacking the spine piece by piece. Vertebra by vertebra, rolling all the way up. Arms reach up nice and long overhead. And we hinge up and over to the right and center. Reach up, stretch up and over to the left and center. One more each side. And arms rest down by your side. All right, guys. Awesome work today. Great job.